Current Council of Governments Transportation Planning and Policy Committee meeting of February 16th, and it is 6.30, and we'll start with Pledge of Allegiance. Call please. Aeon. Red, it's, it's Aeon. Oh, Aeon. Sorry. Couch. Yes, here. Helton. Here. Blades. Present. Crump. Here. Warney. Here. Cryer. Here. Navarro. Here. Creighton. Here. Para. I am here. Prout. Raina, uh, Scrivener, here. Bob Smith, I'm here. Phil Smith, here. Trujillo, here. And Vasquez, thank you. Thank you, and welcome, Mayor of McFarland. I think uh, you were at our last meeting in virtual, but you're in the flesh this time, so welcome. Uh, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. State your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public speakers? Seeing none here, do we have any online? We do not. Moving on to item three, special action item, Assembly Bill 361 authorizing teleconferencing under certain conditions. This is our last time to do this. Mr. Chairman, I'll take this item. Ms. Napier is not here tonight. This, uh, this will be the last time we have to take this action. We're asking you that you approve the action listed under the item. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I, adopt, I move the adopt resolution number 2324. Sec Second. Roll call vote, please. Aye on. Aye. Couch. Yes. Helton. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Warney. Yes. Cryer. Here. Navarro. Yes. Creighton. Yes. Para. Yes. Prout. Yes. Scrivener. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. And Trujillo. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I see our attorney, after explaining it to everybody, took advantage <laughs> of the last time. <laughs> Uh, consent agenda opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Any member of the public wish to withdraw an item? Any council member wish to withdraw an item? Seeing none, can I have a motion? Motion on consent. Second. Roll call vote, please. Aye on. Aye. Couch. Yes. Helton. 
Yes. Blades. Hi. Crumb. Yes. Warney. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Creighton. Yes. Para. Yes. Prout. Yes. Scrivener. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. And Trujillo. Yes. Item five, meeting teleconferencing options. Mr. Hakimi and Van Wick, uh, we talked this one quite a bit. Yes, we did talk about it last month. What, um, what staff is looking for uh, this month is a conversation if the board cares to have one and some direction. I have a few comments that may be uh, may be relevant and then uh, Brian may have some before you start your discussion. Um, I just have a, a handful of comments on this and uh, but I will ask them out, out loud the question parts. Uh, does the uh, and this Brian is mainly for you if you can address this when you talk um, right after me. Does the decision or the direction um, that the board takes tonight apply to the subcommittees? Uh, I'm under the understanding that Yes, it does, like the TTAC and the RPAC. Um, also, my understanding, and I had a conversation with um, Vice Mayor Prout this morning, is if we do elect to um, go with the, what I call the old Brown Act rules, um, the, all the call-in or remote locations must be within Kern County. That's my understanding has to be within our jurisdiction, which is only Kern County. So um, ex as an example, the Fresno uh, Michael or, or Kirsten who are in Fresno or Bishop or any of us who are, who are traveling or any of you who are traveling out of the county uh, could not participate that way. Uh, the look, the, if we do go with the, what I call the old Brown Act, the locations must be uh, listed on the agenda, and we will certainly comply with that. Uh, but those locations need to be op physically opened if they're locked. Like, as an example, we talked last month about um, Ridgecrest City Hall, as an example. Someone needs to unlock the door, post the agenda at least three days before, and if anyone shows up, needs to let them in and let them participate. Um, from last month's conversation, if, if that's the direction the board goes, you know, maybe we could start with, say, Ridge, a location in Ridgecrest to Hatchby, Delano and Taft, a handful. If it works well, we can expand it. If it doesn't work well, we could contract, contract it. Uh, and, and just one more thing, Brian, if you, you could ad address. Um, members could call from their home if they wanted to, but that would have their home address would have to be listed on the agenda, and uh, if someone wanted to show up and sit there with them, they would have to be able to do that. With that, Mr. Chairman, I will turn it over to Brian for any additional guidance, and then I will ask uh, the board to have a conversation if you want and give us some direction. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, good evening. Uh, after after last month's meeting, as you know, I circulated a memo that uh, discusses what are the three options for teleconferencing under the Brown under the Brown Act. Uh, there is the classic teleconferencing, the one that Aaron has referred to as as the Brown Act teleconferencing. There's also AB three sixty one, which is what we're currently doing. And there's the new one, which is AB 2449. Um, you know, they all have, as detailed in the memo, they have a lot of uh, very specific rules for each one. Um, before I get into those, I'll, I'll try to address Aaron's questions here. Uh, you know, first is whether the decision would also apply to subcommittees. Uh, that's, a, that's a decision that uh, you could make generally. You could... Um, if you want to, yes, you can have it apply to the subcommittees as well. Um, you could also leave it to the subcommittees. It's really your board's decision. Um, whether the, I have my next question noted is whether uh, the members must appear from within the 
geographical bounds of Kern County. Now, what the requirement is that there must be at least a quorum that participate from within the geographical bounds of the local agency's jurisdiction. So if we have, for example, our Caltrans members uh, who are outside the geographical bounds of Kern County, but we still have a quorum here in Kern County, then that would be okay. Now that's under the classic Brown Act teleconferencing where, as we've noted, the locations have to be held open to the public. They have to be listed on the agenda. Um, so, you know, depending where you are, it may or may not be an appropriate location for that. As far as AB 361, AB 361 does not require a quorum within the bounds of the jurisdiction. And AB 2449 requires, it's even more specific, it requires that a quorum participate from a singular physical location. So we would have to have at least a quorum at Kerncog under AB 2449. AB 2449 also has some further restrictions on uh, members who appear remotely, for example, uh, you would have to disclose whether any, any other adults are present with you at the remote location and what their relationship is to you. Uh, um, it, this one does not require that the location would be held open to the public. That's something that is is only from the classic Brown Act teleconferencing. So, you know, I from what I've heard, it sounds like there is a lot of interest in in holding open some of the classic Brown Act teleconferencing uh, for the benefit of the members who are having to travel from from further away. Um, and that's that's certainly something that could be set up. Uh, um, AB 361 won't be an option anymore once the state of emergency ends. AB 2449, uh, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of logistics to work out, but in in theory we could also get that done if if that's what your board would like to do. Uh, that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Thank you, Brian. You did cut out some, but I think we got the message. Uh... From what I understand, the discussion that we've had, I, it seems to me the classic, to return to the classic Brown Act is kind of the direction I think I was hearing and the direction that makes sense to me, but what is the pleasure of the council? Yes. I would agree with that. I would say uh, we had a, a similar discussion at KSERA about this same type of policy. What would we do? What we decided to do there was go back to the old way where we all meet in person. Um, but we still were going to allow the public to comment remotely. Is that part, has that been part of the discussion so far? I, I don't know. Can we have the attorney's opinion on that? So you can, you can definitely continue to hold meetings open to members of the public uh, by virtual access. Um, the restrictions in the Brown Act really apply to the members of the council. So members of the public, uh, staff still, still are able to appear remotely if that's, if that's what you would like to do. I would suggest that we give that a try. If it becomes problematic, we can address it. Um, we haven't had any issues so far at Kern Cog, and they've been allowed and able to do that. Mm -hmm. That's a suggestion that I've got. <clears throat> Thank any, you. Any other comments from council? Seeing none, do we need a motion? No, no we, we. I'll move my suggestion unless you have a comment. So, no, I don't think we need a motion, to, but the direction, let me be clear, the direction I'm hearing is we will go to the classic Brown Act um, th those of you that want to volunteer to be one of those locations 
please let us know at least uh, 10 days in advance. We typically publish our agendas the Wednesday before our meeting. That does, uh, if you don't know by then, we can, we can resort to the 72 hours in the law, but uh, I would like to stick with uh, a week beforehand if we can. But what I heard was the desire of the board is we're going to go back to the classic Brown Act. If anyone wants to call in, we will list it on the agenda, that those locations. In addition to that, we will publish the call-in number for the use of the public um, if they want to. And like I think I've uh, I've said to a couple of you, <coughs> this uh, the direction you give us today uh, can change every month. We we can um, we can adjust on the fly every month. If it's not working, we can go back and forth uh, within the law. I I think to address, I think yes, you heard it right, and I think also it is important. I think I heard from the attorney that staff could still call teleconference in as could the public and that's a good thing and, and, and also the the uh, the the voting uh, members on the t-tax that that are out from outside this jurisdiction the caltrans members and maybe the um, members from the military community if there's a quorum here already uh, could do that from outside um, of our jurisdiction and I, we didn't discuss, but my feeling is that TTAC and RPAC should follow the same rules that we follow. So I, I have yes, to Supervisor Couch. When you said uh, classic Brown Act, I was under the impression that you meant we would all meet in the same physical location. That's not what you're saying. No, no, I, I, I am saying that the, the classic Brown Act. Uh, the allows intent, intent is that we all meet in person, but allows for teleconferencing if it is posted in advance on the agenda. Oh, it, I didn't realize the classic Brown Act allowed that. Yes, I right. did. But you yeah. have to op you have to be yeah, in a public place, and public have to be able to come. Has to be posted on the agenda, and right. If, if you're doing it from a hotel, as an example, you got to give the hotel room that you're doing it from, and Anyone can come in there with you. Hotel room of doing what? Though? Teleconferencing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. One last clarification sure. then. If, say, Ridgecrest or an outlying area had a posted, agendized teleconferencing meeting, could the member attend that from that meeting, from that location, or the member has to be here? No, the, the member can attend that meeting and it will count uh, towards a quorum. That's th the big benefit of using the classic Brown Act over this. Uh, the, newer, the newer law is uh, the people that teleconference don't count for a conference under the new law. The members that uh, teleconference. All right, that clarifies that. In addition, when you typically have it like at a municipal place, like a city hall, it's going to be a higher quality than just calling in from your your office at home. Same, same, same. No, that's that's exactly uh, what what we've been doing. But uh, yes, so. Mr. Chairman, yes, we do have a comment from Member Blades. Uh, he does say, "I'll let you know. I can see Ridgecrest being one of those locations." Yeah, I mean that's why we're talking about it, it seems to make a lot of sense for Ridgecrest and Is there, is there any Spring. other uh, location that's, uh, that you want me to start with? I'll, I'll start with a minimum of Ridgecrest. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. But I, I don't think we have to decide that now. I mean, if something comes up and, and the council member from that area lets you know 10 days in advance and yeah, it could be it's not a problem. Could be Shafter. Right. It, it doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter what the proximity is. Yeah. And it really doesn't matter how many because they count as part of the quorum. Correct. I mean, a, a couple of days, well, I think it was this morning or yesterday, 58 was closed and right. uh, NI5 was closed. 
um, I believe, and Brian, maybe you can weigh in on this, that would probably qualify for an, an emergency exemption for a location, and we could add a, a location if, as an example, 58 was closed and, and uh, uh, Phil Smith couldn't make it to the meeting. And that might exclude Cal City and... Uh, on the circumstances, and that, that may qualify, yes. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. Thank you. Caltrans report, District 6 first. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, real quick, just a quick reminder about the Caltrans planning grants. Um, there's about $35 million available. That call went out to all of our local partners on January 12th with applications due March 9th. Uh, we did hold a, a workshop um, the 31st of January. It was well attended. Thank you for, for Kern Cog staff attending. I uh, want to focus a little bit on Clean California this evening. We do have the call for Clean California local grants program uh, went out on Valentine's Day with applications due April 28th. I understand there'll be a, a larger announcement coming from the governor here coming soon. And so we're focused on uh, current community events that will be coming between the week of uh, March 17th and March 27th, as well as what we're calling the Clean California Day of Action. Um, so about a host of events we'll be involved in. On March 18th, Caltrans will be at the Spring Nature Festival. And then there's a variety of, uh, of dump days. They're calling them tire amnesty days for being able to drop off tires. There'll be one in Bakersfield at the Vena Landfill on the 18th. Uh, there'll be one at Shafter Wasco uh, Landfill on March 25th, and one in Taft as well on March 25th. And then the Keep America Beautiful organization, they'll be hosting a, a Clean California event on March 25th as well. Um, that location for the cleanup is to be determined still. Uh, last month's board, um, I wasn't prepared with Clean California updates, so I kind of want to focus on the Clean California projects we're doing here in Kern County. Uh, there's actually five of them. So there's one in the city of Arvin. Where we're doing improvements on 223 uh, roadway media and pedestrian safety measures. And that project um, will be expected to be awarded on February 1st and uh, contract approval is June 30th, end of this fiscal year. And then for these Clean California projects, all the ones I'm reporting on will have to be wrapped up by end of fiscal year, so June 30th, 2024. We're also doing another project on Garza Circle and State Route 204, which will be some undercrossing improvements and beautification. Uh, that project is expected to be awarded in April. Uh, we're also doing some safety improvements along California Avenue. That project will be awarded, expected to be awarded in May. And then the one, uh, the city of Bakersfield, the State Route 204 enhanced, where we talked about doing the road dive and the bike lanes. That project we're expecting to award this June. And then finally, there's a, a 99 McFarland Delano and Hassett project where we'll do a new pedestrian trail system along the freeway, uh, both northbound, southbound, front roads in Delano area. And we'll include benches and other beautification on the trail system. And that project is expected to be awarded in May of this year as well. And like I mentioned, all these projects that we're doing with Clean California, um, expect to have those contracts out this fiscal year. And then we have to wrap them up in the year by June 30th, 2024. With that, that completes my report. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Caltrans? Uh, uh, Michael, can you uh, get us uh, details on that McFarland trail, trail system? I'd like to see that. I can. Thank you. Yep. And I had asked, you, you, you mentioned to me before the meeting, but I, I thank you for following up on the lights, uh, 99 for the bike path and Absolutely. turns out that it was the city's responsibility and they got it done. And I had mentioned uh, eastbound on underneath 99 at 24th Street, 58 there, and hopefully somebody can start talking about that. But it made me also think about where California Avenue goes underneath 99 is also a very difficult place for pedestrians and bicyclists. And if somebody could take a serious look at that and see what type of improvements sure. would work there would be great. Yeah, I'll add that to our list. Like I said, uh, our project management folks, uh, John Luz, you know, our maintenance operation deputy myself, we have quarterly meetings and yeah, I'm going to get closer. Uh, we're having quarterly meetings and, and the one project you do, you mentioned on Eastbound 24th Street continues to be on our radar. Um, also, we could add this California Avenue underneath Straight Route 99. The, co the challenge right now is just funding and identifying when those funding cycles line would up clean California work for that or um it may have right now we're kind of past that timeline for the for the Caltrans projects because we have to deliver by a certain by oh, okay. the end of fiscal year so 
timing wise would not but um I, I, w- I will talk to john and we'll look at our, our discretionary funds for what we have available okay appreciate it any other questions for michael sure um Bearmont and Boulevard um, is Caltrans uh, maintains uh, Bearmont uh, to 23. Um, how can we get ADA um, crosswalks on the at the at these um, where the where the streets come to to Bearmont Boulevard? Are there specific locations you're looking at? The en- the entire uh, they they don't we don't have any we don't have any ADA um, you know where where people could come um, up the the curb or come down you know, to cross a street. So the, the entire 223 doesn't have any. Okay. I'll look, cause I know we have a shop project, I believe, going down 223, and typically we do a shop project. What is it, maintenance rehab project? We look at ADA compliance and adding those kind of features. So l- let me double check the scope of the 223 project. Thank you. And bring it to attention. Any other questions? Thank you, Michael. District 9. Good evening, Kirsten Helton from District 9 coming to you virtually for the last time without notice. (laughs) Um, I have several items. The um, State Route 58 climbing lane location two environmental document is in final review and it will be circulating to the public uh, starting in mid-March. And we'll notice that uh, circulation period in the in several of the local newspapers so that people can uh, participate in our public meeting and make comments on the project. Also related to the truck climbing lane project, District 9 staff met with FHWA yesterday to debrief, debrief with the USDOT on the unsuccessful rural grant program application for full funding of the segment two construction. Um, we took a lot of notes and we're planning on sharing lessons learned with current COG team and while we did uh, walk away with several notes for improvement. Uh, the bottom line was just that it was a very competitive program. Um, the success rate was described to us as being around 15% of the total applications submitted. So um, it was just that we didn't quite rise uh, to the top within that competitive environment. And then lastly, on the 58 truck climbing lane, uh, I just want to let you know that we have a new funding specialist position that I've mentioned in the last few months. Our new funding specialist has developed a a draft funding strategy for completing all three segments of the truck climbing lane projects. So we'll be reviewing this proposed draft funding strategy this week. Um, It includes all remaining phases for all the segments of the project. And it's based on assessment of funding program match and the project's anticipated competitiveness for those programs. And so we're hoping that can help us move forward with funding for all three of the segments. uh, We have a Mojave pavement project for which the draft environmental document is also scheduled to be signed and finalized at the end of March. And so the public comment period for that one will happen in April. As far as Clean California goes, uh, beyond what Michael had said, we have an Eastern Kern, the Rosamond Zero Escape Clean California project, um, which went out to bid in January and Miller Construction was awarded the uh, contract for that project. So they'll be moving forward. And then as far as the tire amnesty day um, in Eastern Kern, we have uh, days in Mojave, Tehachapi, Boron, and in Ridgecrest on 325. So um, let me see. As far as uh, construction projects, the Cummins Cummins Valley left turn lane pocket project is on winter suspension. So it'll kick back up again in the spring. Um, We received bids recently on the Freeman 3 CAPM project, so contracts were awarded uh, on the 9th of February. And that concludes my report, unless there are any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Any questions for District 9? Mr. Uh, Smith, you always have a comment for District 9. It was very, very, very disappointing to learn that our ongoing 20-year project still can't rise to the top of projects when it's becoming more and more apparent that it's going to have to take something else. So uh, the fact that you're getting a funding specialist position, maybe that will help. But if we're competing with the state uh, 
and there's no real entity associated with that segment of the, it, and it's part of it's in District 6, part of it is in District 9. It's a stepchild project that's been waiting for a long time. So I still appreciate every single effort that Aaron's made, our staff has made, and what you guys have done. So uh, I won't let off on the gas, but I sure appreciate uh, this, this new position may help. Thank you. Thank and you. I'll, we certainly hope so. <laughs> and I'll just reiterate, you know, from the city of Bakersfield, that it's not just Tatchby pushing it. You know, I mean, it is a regional project that's important for everybody. Thank uh, you. Chairman Smith, can I? Sure. K Kirsten, can you get me a copy of those debriefing notes? We, we are working on a federal application that's due the 28th of this month, and if maybe there's something that we could learn from the, uh, those debriefing notes. Yes, definitely. I can get them to you tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, Kirsten, this is Kyle Blades from Ridgecrest. Hi. Hi. Uh, just real quick, you mentioned the 325 MSD day. Um, I'm guessing it trickled down to our staff. They have details on that? Yes, they should. If they don't, they can contact either me or Mark Heckman in our office. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. I, I also know Thursday, I think it's the 21st of March, you plan on doing a Clean California event in Ridgecrest. Is that also correct? Yes, that's correct. All right. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Kirsten? Seeing none, Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I have uh, several items on this agenda. I attended the CTC meeting on January 25th and 26th in the Sacramento area. There's two uh, projects I wanted to highlight. Our uh, two-step STIP amendment process, which was noticed in December and then acted upon on in January, was approved. That's where we moved uh, about $24 million from the City of Bakersfield Hageman project to um, constructing the eastbound 58 to northbound loop, loop connector in uh, Bakersfield. That's good news, approved, and that project is likely to be under construction in less than a year. Great news. Also, the Friant Kern Canal multi use path received an allocation of about $4.3 million. The next CTC meeting is March 22nd and 23rd in Los Angeles. I may, may attend uh, one day in person, depending on what's on the agenda. And uh, also, I'll, I'll get to uh, the chairman in a minute. On April 12th to 14th is our Kern Cogs Federal Certification Site Visit. That's where Federal Highway Administration and Federal Transit Administration come every uh, three to four years. You, you as board members may be um, notified or uh, asked to be interviewed during that process. Um, it, uh, the way some of you are also uh, interviewed during our annual audit uh, for our financials. So just, just be aware, and if you have any questions about that, um, please let me know. Uh, over the past month, we've continued to meet with Caltrans and others about the missing connectors on 99 and 58, uh, the State Route 204, Union Avenue, 7 Standard and 43. Roundabout is still on our radar. Also, State Route 33, I mentioned before, uh, I can't remember if you were here last month, Supervisor Couch, but those shoulders were approved on Route 33. That's great news. Earlier today, we had a update meeting on State Route 46 through Lost Hills. I was there a couple of days ago and walked over the new um, pedestrian overcrossing, that wonderful uh, built. I'm not sure if it was officially open yet or not, but there was no fences, so I, I walked across. It's r really beautiful, uh, and thank. I want to publicly thank a uh, wonderful company for building that. It will make uh, life much safer for especially the children crossing the street, but <coughs> if you've been there certain times of the day, it's not just children that cross that street. It's adults that use a park also cross, cross the road. Uh, and we continue to have meetings on truck climbing lanes to figure out how we can how we can get that built uh, and I mentioned um, to a couple of you 
and shared some emails with a couple of you that I have invited the chairman of the California Transportation Commission, and as a reminder, the CTC um, distributes billions with a B of, of transportation funds each year to, to a variety of agencies, including us. Um, I invited her to our, to our March 16th meeting, which is our next board meeting, and she accepted that. She, so she will be here, and I will plan for um, a 5 o'clock dinner in this room for her and any of the board members that would like to come a little early to that board meeting. I've also invited our um, statewide elected officials that represent uh, Kern County. Um, I, I will be making a push and will ask several of you to include in your remarks to her that we currently have two applications in to the CTC uh, that were submitted in December that the recommendations for those awards will come out in May and the decision will be made in June. One is for truck climbing lanes. It's an ask of about uh, seven to eight million dollars to uh, continue the des to not continue to to take the project to the next step after environmental, which is design and right of way. Um, that's one one application that's in. The other one is for the eighth and final movement at 58 and 99. And uh, Supervisor Scribner is assisting with a possible aerial tour uh, for her that will happen earlier that day if she, if she agrees to come earlier and Supervisor Scribner, she hasn't uh, said yes to that yet, but as soon as she does, I expect her to say yes, uh, I will let you know, and thank you for that. It won't be a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if it is, it won't be white. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Supervisor Scribner has a, uh, arranged for an aerial tour before for federal and state officials, so I truly appreciate that, and it gives the decision makers a really good idea of, of what we're talking about. You can, sometimes you can't get that from reading an application, uh, but as as uh, as many of us who drive on 58 know, uh, if if you don't if you don't drive it regularly, you can't comprehend w what we're talking about. And hopefully, when we are flying, if we are flying over it, we can uh, we can see in person what happens when a truck pulls out to pass another truck and tries to pass that you know one or two miles an hour faster but uh, subject to any of your questions mr. chairman that concludes my report on this agenda thank you any questions for the director seeing none that will adjourn the TPPC meeting and we will open the Kern Cog board meeting roll call is the same yes public comments are the same do we have any public comments for the current cog meeting hearing none consent agenda all items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions if comment or discussion is desired by anyone the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Any public wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Seeing none, any council member wish to remove anything? Move approval, consent agenda. <coughs> Second. Second. Roll call vote, please. Aye on. Aye. Couch? Yes. Blades? Yes. Crumb? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Creighton? Yes. Prout? Yes. Scribner? Aye. Bob Smith? Yes. Bill Smith? Yes. And Trujillo? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman. I have about five items on this agenda. The San Joaquin Valley Policy Council had a meeting on January 27th, and a subcommittee of that group, the REAP, uh, REAP group has a meeting coming up uh, in about a week from tomorrow, and that uh, group consists of Supervisor Scribner,
Councilman Smith and Councilman Prout. You know who you are. The Kern Regional Award of Merit Celebration, that's our annual awards, is Thursday, March 2nd. If you have not made a reservation, please do so immediately. How, how full are we, uh, Suzanne? We have about 150, so most of you know how big that room is. So if you want to come, please raise, talk to Suzanne tonight if you can. The San Joaquin uh, Annual Valley Policy Conference is April 24th and 26th at the Great Wolf Lodge in Manteca. If you'd like to attend, um, I will be attending, and as well as maybe one or two other staff members, and certainly the board members are welcome to attend. Kern Cog has eight tickets to the 2023 Trucking with Clean Fuels Conference on February 23rd. That'll be held in Bakersfield. There's a flyer in the folder. Uh, we receive those tickets because we're a sponsor. It includes breakfast and lunch. If you want to attend, I have a sign-up sheet here that we'll pass around and um, it will be an informative event and you'll get breakfast and lunch. And finally on this agenda, the Fair Political Practices Commission Form 700 is due April 1st. As a reminder, you can use the same form, just change the agency uh, and turn it into us by April 1st, please. Subject to any of your questions, that concludes my report, but let me uh, go over what's in the folder before I close. In your folders tonight, timeline covering February through May. A schedule of cash disbursements covering November and December. Clean California Community Days Pledge flyer. The uh, event I mentioned that's being held, the 2023 Trucking with Clean Fuels Conference flyer and a biking and walking community safety meeting. Is that uh, our ATP project? That's our um, ATP project that is being delivered by Bike Bakersfield. And with that, uh, subject to any of your questions, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for the director? Hearing none, we are adjourned.